Hi, my name is Beth Prince, and I'm a kindergarten teacher at Hearst Elementary School in Washington, D.C., and I can't wait to tell you about The Good Egg. This is a book about a little egg that is doing all of the right things, helping their friends, saving kitty cats from trees, cleaning up big messes that his friends make, but then all of this is causing so much stress and causes this egg to crack. The egg decides to take a break because it is cracking under all the pressure of trying to fix everyone's behavior. After a moment of reflection, the egg figures out that it misses its friends and comes back and comes to the realization that everyone is not perfect. My students love this book, not only the illustrations that were really funny, but also learning that friends that sometimes make mistakes can still be your friends. And that is what their big takeaways were. We love looking at all the illustrations and the expressions on the characters in the story really humanizes these fictional characters and makes it really fun and easy for kids and adults to make connections with what's happening in the story. I love to use this book at the beginning of the year. This is also a great book to bring back out in the springtime when we're seeing all the eggs and all of the things that we um, see typically in our environments during the springtime. This is a great time to bring the book back out again and go over and revisit those values that we found in this book. So one of the big standards in kindergarten is to learn about the elements in a story what happens at the beginning, middle, and end of the story, your major events. Also talking about the setting and characters. But what I would do in terms of character development is have just a sheet of paper with three egg shapes on it and kind of have the kids draw how, that, um, how the good egg started off at the beginning of the story, how the character was in the middle of the story, and then how the character was at the end of the story. Emphasizing that as the illustrators did in this book, kind of really showing how the egg changed through their expressions. Um, for math, you can do um, math games with the book. There, you can have cartons of eggs. If you're in person, you can have cartons of eggs and have the kids do um, number corresponding, matching the numbers from one to 12. For science, you can go into different types of eggs that we find in nature. And even in art, what I've done before and what I really enjoy doing is having the kids pick an egg character from the story, decorate their egg um, as the one they identified with in the story and create a bulletin board. We would create the bulletin board with the carton um, egg on there, just a flat surface. The kids would then have pictures at their table or you can put it up on a whiteboard or smart board, whatever you have. And they will choose a character, an egg, one of the eggs from the story that they identify with and draw themselves as that character in an egg shape, of course. Then they'll go to that bulletin board and put themselves inside of the little egg carton. So that's what we would do as kind of a culminating art project. I hope that they will learn from this book that we are all uniquely wonderful. And that even though we feel like we want to try to do the right things all the time, we don't want to feel bad if we have a moment of making a poor choice. And we want to have that grace for ourselves and for our classmates and friends as we move through the school year. So that is one thing. That's why we read it at the beginning of the school year, because we want to kind of really hit that message home that we want to care about each person in our classroom and allow each person the space to make a mistake and recover. I hope that you will add the good egg to your classroom library.